On most days like today, I wake up at 8 a.m. Yeah, it's not the crack of dawn, but if you know me, then you know it's earlier than I'd like it to be. We'll skip over the details of my morning commute, but it culminates in me going down to the basement and retrieving my bike. The commute's about three and a half miles and takes anywhere from 13 to 15 minutes, if I'm feeling fast. I leave and I'm ready to go. I bomb down the interstate, I'm going as fast as I can, and of course I annoyingly come to a stop right at that seal bridge, the intersection of the Rose Quarter Transit Station. To my right, I have to dodge those aggressive and murderous looking geese before taking on the only ascent of my commute. From there, I start to jockey for position in the race that subconsciously occurs down on the waterfront. So of course I have to navigate and weave through all the pedestrians beneath the steel bridge and the true sprint occurs on the west bank. So I shift my weight forward, I'm as aerodynamic as I can be, huge backpack filled with sketchbooks and pens, a rain jacket zipped all the way up, and some bulky rain pants, sweats, but more than likely some jeans. And now, I typically win that race, but only because I reach my destination right when I start to get tired. As I detour through the Japanese sculpture garden and up to the light at the NATO crosswalk, I get ready to walk into the White Stag building. Now, my legs are chapped, my butt is sore, and I'm genuinely uncomfortable. So I'm sure some of you guys know what I'm talking about. But luckily, I've been equipped to tackle the problem that's plagued my rear end. As a master's student at the UO, I've learned to apply the design process as a means to uncover the problems experienced by athletes. <laughs> and of course, the facilities here have helped me to create solutions as prototypes for those problems. Problems such as rider comfort on a bike seat. Now that I've shared with you guys my intent, I want to tell you guys a preview of where we'll be going today. So the intent stage is usually marked by passion or interest in an area that you see for possible improvement. Mine was my own biking experience, but this can come to you in many different ways. Then you'll move on to the define stage. Here, it takes a few things, eyes and ears. As a designer, you have to be able to observe and listen to your consumer. That way, you can typically find the nuggets worth exploring. So, my search led me to River City Bicycles. And since you never designed for yourself, I had to ask questions. And it wasn't so much about asking what, but more so asking why. Because asking why unlocks the motivation behind athlete and consumer behavior, therefore releasing the true insight. So I get there and I'm asking questions to the employees about their riding style, their preference, their level of competitiveness, and other things that start to hint at that evaluation for bike seats. And of course, that's when I find it. Flexibility, riding style, and ride duration all influence the consumer when evaluating bike seats for their comfort. Now, I take this insight, something that I found from actually getting out there and talking to people, and this becomes a main motivation in my design work. So I start to build out a brief, so you might call it, looking for research into evidence of riders, professional ones, who have shown their flexibility, their riding style, and across many different durations. I come across images supporting this claim. You can see the more aggressive riders hunch forward in that sprint position that I referenced, and the more leisure relaxed rides. And of course, I stumble across some pressure maps. So clearly someone's thought about how your tush feels on a bike seat. The leftmost pressure map is that leisure, more relaxed, standard riding position. The middle one, the aggressive sprint posture. And the final one, an aerodynamic time trial position, where only the nose of the saddle is being contacted. But then I thought to myself, there are a lot of different bike companies out there. A lot of them accommodate the rider in just one of these positions. But why not all of them, and why not all at once? I combined all these pressure maps into one, creating what you see here. This became crucial in determining where the cushioning for my saddle design would occur. So then I start to draw. Quick gestural sketches, no pressure. I don't have to worry about any line, feature, shape, or any important detail. 
just drawing down what comes to mind. So it's going well. I'm getting some things that look like flower stems, branches, leaves, maybe some petals. You know what? Scratch that. What if I make it a little more aggressive, futuristic even? I don't know, like a spaceship. You know what? What am I even doing? This is the wall. Your mind is blank. Ideas aren't flowing as abundantly as they were before. Everything that I'm drawing now is starting to look like things I drew just minutes ago. Honestly, some of them don't even look like you can sit on it. Usually at this stage is where I turn for some inspiration. Some quick photo caching through Google Images, Pinterest, and Uncrate is sure to do the trick. So I start drawing again, this time trying to add more detail and incorporate my inspiration. Sometimes I directly cite lines or features from these images and transfer them directly to the page. Other times, I do my best to draw my interpretation of those pictures, taking what stands out and making it a part of my design. So was it the strict geometry of the architecture in this building? Was it the ingenuity of the Vapor Max, the futuristic lines of speed in the Tron motorcycle, or the air bubbles as they rise to the surface? All of these served as aesthetic influences in my design. But wait, air. I've got it, air is my cushioning solution. If I use air to cushion the bike seat, then yeah, that's it. So I start to research, looking into current existing competitors to see why they haven't explored this opportunity. Surely with millions and billions of dollars, you expect someone like Specialized, Physique, all these other companies to pursue the area. But there's nothing. In fact, no one really ventures away from the traditional saddle cushioning, that being foam. A lot of consumers rely on the cushioned saddles and some cushioned chamois or apparel to provide a comfortable ride. So now that I have this idea, right, where air is my inspiration, I imagine that it would work something like a piston. It would offer varied support to the rider as they shift through the various riding positions. And the other thing about air, it's light. Think back to Bill Bowerman. If I can shave grams of weight off the saddle, I can save the athlete 10 times that over the course of a longer endurance ride. So I mean, that's one way to improve performance. So I start drawing again, and finally, I reach at an iteration that I'm happy with. Here you have some speedy looking thing with some pods where air pads would go. And typically you take this iteration to a group of wear testers, people who are willing to give you feedback and tell you what's wrong with the design, what was missed, or things that could be improved. Luckily, I have five design graduate students, all my classmates, who are willing to give some feedback, provide some flavor, and some thoughtful questions as well. So of course, I start to draw again, taking in the feedback that I just received, but not completely sacrificing my own style and aesthetic. So some things that I change that you'll see, the rear of the saddle, I make the air pads wider to offer more surface area so that you can have a more comfortable ride. I also introduce a slight curve across the entire length of the saddle. So not only does it look comfortable, it feels comfortable as well. And this is Arion. Now, feel free to pass this around. Just know I did make it, so please don't break it or we'll meet outside. <laughs> so our prototyped area on here using Rhinoceros. It's a 3D modeling software. We won't get into the logistics, but it's very boring. I was then able to 3D print that there form that you see as a way, as a way to, to model the form that I was hoping to finally achieve. And for the airbags, I prototyped those using layers of laser cut acrylic, gluing those together to create a mold. The mold I also brought in today. Feel free to pass it around. You can't break this one. 
So the mold was useful in creating the airbags because then I was able to lay across a thin layer of plastic film that would be vacuum formed to that shape. And to create a sealed volume of air, I then took a second layer of film and heat bonded those two together, thus creating the airbags and my cushioning technology. So here you can see some photos of the prototype, both in action and some nice fancy photos as well. Now, a designer's job is never done. In fact, at any point in the design process, you could return to the previous steps. So I immediately start thinking about the next iteration. I'm starting to think about ways to test and validate the idea to ensure that it improves rider performance. From here, I start thinking about different ways to design the air cushioning, to apply my technology, and of course, to make your tush feel better. <laughs> now, every good cyclist knows that it's 90% engine and 10% everything else. My goal has been to improve that 10% as best as I can so that the rider maximizes their 90. So after critiquing and reviewing the first prototype, I discover some things for the next iteration. One, that I can fill the airbags with an inert gas. Its higher density would ensure that they retain their shape for longer and are more responsive. Also, I could prototype the shell of the bike seat using casted carbon fiber to make sure that it's light and fast so that you can break some world records. Now, everything that I've designed speaks to the person that I am. I've walked you through the design process and you see the way that I think. I'm a detail-oriented problem solver, a creative, a maker, and an athlete. So no matter what it is that I designed, whether it's apparel or footwear or equipment, my goal as product designer is to grant confidence to the user and increase their performance. Thank you. <laughs>